U.S. Secretary of State. Uh, I have a honor, glory to our power, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kakodash. Yahweh is our Heavenly Father's name in the Hebrew tongue, simply means He is and His only begotten Son, the Redeemer of Israel, the root and offspring of King David. The bright and morning star, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords family. We are about to witness true royalty on this planet Earth. Yes, true royalty on this planet Earth. You're going to have our power sending His only begotten Son, the Redeemer of Israel, Yahweh Shai, along with King David the 12 apostles, the 144,000 governors, mentioned in the book of Revelation chapter 14, yes. And the large multitude, family, the true royal family, yes, it's about to be revealed and we pray that the Most High Yahweh and His only begotten Son will have mercy upon us. Hey? And bless us with that holy salvation which is coming for the elect of Israel. Honor, glory to our power, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukha Kodash family. This is going to be news and prophecy. Our power, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, name is going to be magnified. Yes. Because like I keep saying in this nation's family, they have a short memory. Mm? They have a short memory. You know why? Family, we know what the Lord did to Egypt. Yes. We know what the Lord did to King Pharaoh. Hey. The same thing is about to happen on this planet. The Lord, Yahweh, our power. He's about to send his only begotten son to come and redeem his elect. He's going to literally pass over. Hmm? This is going to be the last Passover. He's going to pass over his elect and he's going to destroy the two thirds of our nations. Yes. Along with these heathen nations. And whoever survived, family, they are going straight into slavery. So everything that you see, we're going to allow our friend from full spectrum survival to speak. The video that I'm about to play, family, I don't own it. I'm not making any money off it. I'm not benefiting from it. This is, this is for what? Commentary, educational purpose only. Eh? Family, let's get into it. Again, honor, glory to our power, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. The only reason why I'm able to open my mouth is because of those two names. Yes, at one point, we didn't even have a name to call upon. We were following all these nations and their gods. But the Lord had mercy upon us like he said he was going to. Yes. He says, in the land of our captivity, we shall remember ourselves and call upon his name. And that's where we are right now. We are calling upon our power, Yahweh, who's about to turn this place upside down. Because we are living in the last days. As these nations get ready for war, family, they are about to fulfill the will of our power, Yahweh. That's right. Yahweh. Yeah, that's why he's known as the what? The power of war, family. I formed the light and create darkness. He says, I made peace and create evil. I alone, the Lord, do all these things. People think the Lord is all about love, 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 love. No, I say nay. The Lord is balanced. That's right. The Lord is balanced. Family, let's allow our friend Brad to speak a bit. And family will bring the precept out. This is going to be news and prophecy. Family, the Lord says what? This says what? Family, watch and pray. When you start seeing the signs, family, you know, it says, look up. Your salvation is nigh. Shall warm to the beloved, the apple of the Lord's eyes. Yes. Israel. The so-called Latinos, black, Negroes. Yes, Native Americans spread across the four corners of the world. You guys are the Hebrew Israelite. You are not black. You are not white. You are not Negroes. You are not. Those are all the by words that the Lord says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 that you're going to be known by. That's prophecy. 
That's what family. Now we are rejoicing. The fact that now we know who our father is and we know who salvation is for, is for the Hebrew Israelites. We are rejoicing. We cannot wait for this kingdom to go down, for the Lord to establish a righteous kingdom. That's right. That's all we're asking for, a righteous kingdom. Yes, your children will be able to play on the street. Yes, your food will be clean. Nobody's going to ask you to eat bugs or any creeping things because we know the laws were given to us. We're supposed to what? Eat clean food. We know what clean food is. You can get those in uh, Leviticus, our diet. The Lord gave us everything. But these wicked people that are ruling right now, Esau is saying that, why? You're going to eat bugs and be happy about it. Yes, you're going to own nothing and be happy about it. You're going to about to put chip in your hand or your arm, your forehead. Without it, you won't be able to survive. That's when you know that the wicked is in rulership. The family, we are waiting on our Lord because he's not going to disappoint us. Oh, no, 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 no. The Lord is going to come through for us. Or praises to our power, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. He says, he, he says, Jacob, thy worm, I'm going to save thee. Eh? The Lord is going to save us. The remnant, the elect family, the elect are going to be just fine. That's why we put on as the elect family. You got to have the faith to believe that uh, no matter what is coming down the pipe, the Lord is going to give us the strength to endure. He says, because thou hast kept my patience, I will also keep you in the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the whole earth. That's Revelation 3.10. Or praises to our power, Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh. Shai, family, let's get into it. Strong concern that things are about to get really bad here in the United States of America and in Europe. We run sentiment analysis on social media, and every time we have had a major cataclysmic event on a, on a social level, we have seen a spike in anti-government discontent, malcontent, hatred for our fellow citizens, and we're starting to see that again right now. We have some indicators that we are going to see some sort of uh, large kinetic event take place either in the United States of America or in Europe in the next couple of possibly days to weeks. And it just uh, the correlation here isn't anything like prophecy. It's not anything out of the normal. What yes. you have is sentiment yes, analysis. Is what that means is that you're analyzing the sentiment the or the feelings the of the population and you're looking for spikes, spikes in hatred, spikes in anger, spikes in discontent. Well, like most emotions, you have to have a, uh, a kind of a, a head that comes to a head before it can be relieved. And so you have a spike and a crescendo and then a sort of plateau or a drop on the other, uh, you know, the opposite side of the spectrum. And so we're looking out right now, and I want you and your family to be especially careful when you go out in public, when you go to malls, when you go to the grocery store, because we do have some indication that we're going to see some form of violence. It could be something small, like a number of, uh, you know, localized attacks, uh, you know, like when we have those stabbings over in London when you have some kinetic projectile events here in the United States of America, those are very localized, or it could be a little bit larger and get out of hand like the riots that we saw just a couple of years ago. What we do have is a world at war. Look at what we're seeing right now. Putin, Russia, Ukraine, NATO, Europe, the United States of America. We have Armenia versus Azerbaijan. We have Russia versus Ukraine. We have China versus Taiwan. We have India versus Pakistan. We have the world is literally at war. And with the world being at war, we start to see a bigger picture materialize. And that materialization is that we are going to be. Before it happens, he tells us about it. We give honor, glory to our power, Yahweh, the only one that gets the credit because he told us. He told us first and foremost. Let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 8. Revelation, chapter 8. Verse 13, it says, hmm? And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, family pay attention. It says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Family, that was, that was three woes. Mm -hmm. Came out of the angel's mouth. Three woes. It says, 
to, in, to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. They mention three wars. Family, war simply means destruction. The first war, if my memory serves me right, was the first world war, which was in what? 1914. That was the first war. 1914 and came and passed. The second war, eh? Was what? Was 1939 to 1945. But let's get, let's go to Revelation chapter 9. The next chapter over. Verse 12, it says here, One war is past. Remember, there was three wars that, mentioned, that was mentioned. The next chapter, it tells you, One war is past. That was the first world war. And behold, there come two wars more after. Remember, it was three wars. The first war is past. Now let's go to Revelation 11, verse 14. Family, this is to glorify our power, Yahweh. Because family, before it happens, he tells us about it. It says, Revelation chapter 11, verse 14. It says, the second war is past. So family, we have the first world war and then we have the second world war. He says the second war is past and behold, the third war cometh quickly. That is what Brad is talking about. The third war cometh quickly and all honor and glory to our power, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, for giving us the eye self, blessing us with this true riches. We know what is happening through the spirit. That's why we are not worried because it has to happen. The book has to be fulfilled. In order for this kingdom to come, Yahweh Shai's kingdom to come, everything in the book has to be fulfilled. Yes. And that includes the third world war. Let's continue to hear a little bit from Brad. Yes, we know what is happening. All these nations getting together, family, it is for the third world war, the war in um, the Armageddon. Family, let's hear a bit of this and I have a few articles that I need to bring out to edify the flock. Because family, this is what we're supposed to do. This word here, was with this, this, this talent, the Lord didn't bless us with this talent to put it in a napkin. No. Because when the Lord returns, guess what? He's going to need usury. Yes. He's going to say, what did you do with your talent, family? And better have an answer. We are blessed. This is a privilege. This word is a privilege. We know what is happening. The majority of the people don't know what is happening. This is how blessed we are. This is the true riches that Yahweh our king spoke about in parables. Yes. Let's hear what the brother has to say. Let's, let's hear a bit of this. So family, the third world war is coming. First war came and gone. Yeah. The second war. It says, Behold, the third war cometh quickly. Revelation 11, 14. Locked deep into this conflict for the next couple of years. Putin says that unfriendly forces are now beginning to target Russia personally. We, speaking as Russia, must take an initiative in order to succeed in confronting them. Fighting erupted, as you know, yesterday between Armenia and Azerbaijan. The latest flare-up in a decades-long standoff over disputed regions. Now, I want you to start to pay attention here between the correlations of Greece and Turkey, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Russia, Ukraine, China, Taiwan. What do we have here? We have a vying for control over land. Now, you might ask yourself, why? Why is this land so important? Why is Taiwan so important to China? Why is Ukraine so important to Russia? Why is, uh, you know, the Armenian land so important to Azerbaijan? Why is, uh, you know, the conflict between Greece so important to Turkey? It doesn't have to make sense. We are just in a world war. The clashes have raised the prospect of Russia becoming embroiled in another war near its borders, according to military strategists. 
Each side, of course, blamed the other for the fighting that broke out along their border. It was the worst escalation. Let me tell you the videos that came out of that. There was just a massive amount of artillery being used. Hostilities between the countries since a war over a ceasefire that was brokered by Russia to end large-scale fighting between the two countries' forces. The Prime Minister Pashinyan of Armenia said that 49 of his country's servicemen have died overnight in clashes with the Azerbaijani army. Azerbaijan, uh, the defense ministry, accused Armenia of a number of large-scale provocations that it was forced to retaliate against. I fear that we are witnessing, according to one military strategist and historian, the start of a major military operation between Azerbaijan and Armenia. On Tuesday morning, the Armenian Defense Ministry claimed that armed forces of the opposition country conducted artillery strikes. The strikes included drones, large-caliber firearms fired in the direction of Gora Sot, uh, Jermuk, if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, according to the Armenian Defense Ministry. The Ministry of Defense of Azerbaijan responded with a statement saying that there was a small-scale aim to ensure the security of the border. Does this start to sound familiar to you? The unrest in the regions is decades old. It dates back to the collapse of the Soviet Union, when the region, backed by Armenia, declared independence from Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan had long claimed to retake that territory, which is internationally recognized as Azerbaijani. On Tuesday, Armenia called on Russia to implement a almost 25-year-old defense treaty that stipulates the countries will defend each other's territorial integrity and each other's sovereignty in the event of an attack by a foreign country. So family, if we're not going to listen to the entire thing, so you got a gist of it. All these nations are preparing for war because the end is here. All this thing has to happen before the king makes his way. The family, I want to have an image that I want to show to you. Where is that? So this was Daniel's dream, Daniel 7. This is Daniel's dream. Okay. In that dream, Daniel saw all these nations that will be ruling before the king makes his way. Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, makes his way to take down these nations. We know that Babylon came, the uh, Assyria Babylonian Empire, right? came and gone. Right? That's, that was the head. And then the chest, Medio Persia, that, that also came and gone. The Grecian Empire. That was headed by what alexander the great that's the that was the beginning of the edomite the, the esau's kingdom beginning of the edomite reign eh? that came and gone and then the roman came and 168 bc to 467 a.d that's right and then the last leg of the roman empire because that little horn came back out what how did america america was born out of the british that little horn in the book of Revelation chapter 7. Sorry, the Revelation, sorry, the book of Daniel chapter 7. You know, the, the book of Daniel chapter 7, that little horn was America. Who, who came out of the seven? Who is the eighth? Family, this book don't lie. This book don't lie. We just thank the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, for giving us the eyes off and giving us the mystery. Mystery. Eh? Because Yahweh he was the only one that was able to what, take, remove the seal, the understanding of the book, and bless us with the understanding of the book to tell his people that salvation is coming for them. Yes, that's why you see in these nations getting ready for war. Let's go to the book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 41. I want to read a bit of that so you know where we are. Let's go to Daniel 2, starting from verse 41. It says here, And whereas thou sowest the feet and the toes, the feet and the toes, part porous clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. That's right. That's where we are right now in prophecy. The iron is the, the, their military might, the last leg of the Roman Empire and NATO and the EU. That's right. It says here, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, which is their military. They have over 800 military bases across the world. That's their strength. For as much as thou sowest the iron mixed with miry clay, and as the toes of the feet, 
and the ten toes family that's nato eu he says we're part of iron and part of clay so the kingdom shall be partially strong and partially broken that's what we are seeing right now they are divided nato eu family they are divided don't get it twisted because this is the laws this 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 was written hmm? before nato and eu was formed that's why we give honor and glory to our power yahweh bahashem yahweh shoy it says verse 42 it says whereas and whereas thou sowest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. You see in the division right now, forming alliances, alliances are no lasting. Family, you are about to see something on this planet that, that has never happened before. That's what the book of Daniel chapter 12 verse 1 tells you. But the elect, the Lord is going to put a hedge of protection around them, around us. It says here, verse 44, it says here, And in the days of these kings shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom. That's right. Which shall never be destroyed. That's Yahweh Shai's kingdom. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Nobody will ever rule on this planet again. Yahweh Shai's kingdom is a everlasting kingdom. And the elect of Israel will be the first fruit, ruling with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Yahweh Shai. He said, But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. Remember, and shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut. Out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. Let me show you what Yahweh is about to do. Again, you see the head is what? The gold. The chest is what? The silver. And the midsection is what? The brass. And the feet, which is Roman, is the iron. It says what? Yahweh when he comes, he's about to destroy every single one. Of those kingdoms he is known as the king of kings he's taking all their crown that's what Yahweh is about to do that's why you see the world in the state that is in right now eh? that's why you see the world in the states it is in it, 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 it's in right now this is let's get into the articles Medvedet if you don't know who Medvedet is he's the former president of russia he's now the head security i think right now he's the uh if i'm if my memory served me right he's the chief uh, i think he's like the head security of russia right now maybe i could be wrong but he has a higher post there yeah, key sec, uh he has a high i think he's um what was a medvedet title he's part of the the security of the country he's i think it's always one of the heads in the in the, in that department anyway medvedet this was published today he says med from rt he says medvedet issue apocalyptic warning to west over ukraine the reason why i was attracted to this uh, article today was family he quoted a verse but that was revelation 9 i think revelation 9 and 6. we'll get to that but that was referring to the second world war but family they know what is coming because Russia is going to play a pivotal role. Because Russia is going to end the B system. It's Russia that's going to take down Babylon, the Great America, and NATO. Because it's written. Actually, before I do that, let's go to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 13. It says here, verse 2, it says here, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Remember, the Edomite kingdom started with who? Alexander the Great. They are known as the leopard. That was the dream that uh, uh, was name had. The dream that uh, Daniel had to interpret. Is it Daniel that had it? Uh, oh, let's get it. Family, I must well get it. What is the good? Uh, I think that was the. Uh, let's go to Daniel. Sorry, I got. I gotta get it. I gotta get it. Daniel seven. Daniel seven. Is it Daniel seven seven or Daniel seven six? Daniel 7, Dan, sorry, Daniel 7 verse 6. After this I beheld and lo, another like a leopard, 
which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl, and the beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. Alexander, that's right, he conquered and conquered. And those four, the four horns were the four generals before he died. Those are the ones that he parted his kingdom to. Family, this book don't lie. We are living in prophecy. So back to the Revelation chapter back to revelation chapter 13 right chapter 13 it says and the beast which i saw was like unto a leopard again that is the grecian empire and his feet were as the feet of a bear the end of it the end the end of the body the feet and that's russia the bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and his great authority that's right the dragon, the old Roman Empire family. That's right, the old Roman Empire. I and mean, you look at the American family, it's just a reincarnation of the Roman Empire. They are Senate, eh? Their government, their justice system is the same way, family. They are building family. There's nothing new under the sun. The book says it. You are looking at reincarnation of the roman empire and this is the last leg of the roman empire before the king make his way before the king make his way let's get the article this is the article it's a medvedet issue apocalyptic warning to the west over ukraine the former russian president used a book of revelation quote to comment on kiev security treaty demands it says here western half wits End quote. From stupid think tanks are leading their countries down the road of nuclear Armageddon with their hybrid war against Moscow. Former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev wrote on his Telegram channel on Tuesday. He says, endlessly funneling weapons and support to Ukraine while pretending not to be directly involved in the conflict will not work added the deputy chair of the russian security council so that's his title family deputy chair of the russia russian security council it says here the, sec the security guarantees proposal unveiled by kiev on tuesday was really a prologue to the third world war you listen to that let's repeat that again so you get it remember the third war in revelation that's right it has to happen. The book has to be fulfilled before the king, Yahweh Shai, makes his way. Right after that Third World War, family, Yahweh Shai is establishing his kingdom. No other nation is going to rule again. That's why we say honor, glory, praises to our power, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Those two names are going to reign supreme on this planet. The kingdom of Yahweh Shai. It says here, the security guarantees proposal unveiled by Kiev on Tuesday was really a prologue to the Third World War, said Medvedev, calling it a hysterical appeal to Western countries engaged in a proxy war against Russia. If the West continues its un unrestrained pumping of the Kiev regime with the most dangerous types of weapons. Russia's military campaign will move to the next level, where visible boundaries and potential predictability of actions by the parties to the conflict. Hmm? The parties to the conflict. Family, the parties to the conflict. You have to ask yourself, who are the parties to this conflict? You have to go back and see who have been supplying weapons to Ukraine. These are the parties to the conflict. Will be erased. Mm? And the conflict will take on a life of its own. As wars always do, Medvedev argued. Yeah. And finally, they are not bragging. Things are about to be turned up. It has to turn up because family, we want the kingdom. In order for the kingdom to come, these things have to happen. The sooner they get it going, the faster we get out of here. That's what we are praying for. Yes, the third world war. Family, 
I can't read this entire article, but I'll put this in the description box. And but you know what? Let's let's read a bit of it because I want to quote. I want to go get to where the revelations. And then the Western nations will not be able to sit in their clean homes, laughing at how they carefully weaken Russia by proxy. Everything will be on fire. Hmm? Family, listen to this. Everything will be on fire around them. It says their people will harvest their grief in full. The land will be on fire and the concrete will melt. Medvedet wrote before citing a Bible verse from Revelation chapter 9 verse 18. But the way he said it, family, because let's go to the book. I will, I'll, I'll go back to Revelation, but I want to go to the book of Peter. Let's go to Peter. 1 Peter 3.10. It says here. Uh, Fervent heat. One second for me. Is it 1 Peter? 1 Peter. Oh, 2 Peter 3.10. My apologies. Second Peter three ten. Second Peter. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away. This heaven, this heaven, this is Esau's rulership. This current rulership. This is the Edomite heaven, shall pass away with great noise, and the elements. Remember what Medvedev said in his article? But here, listen to this. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Revelation 9, 6. That's what he quoted. Let's read that. Revelation 9, 6. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and the death shall flee from them. This is what Medvedev said. He wasn't joking. They are about to turn things up because it's NATO and its allies fighting against Russia. They want to destroy Russia. They burn on the, but they don't know that the Lord has a plan for Russia. It is Russia that's going to lead these nations to take down the beast. Family, it is all about the Lord. Word. He says, the word that comes out of his mouth will not return to him void. Are you listening to this? He says, it shall accomplish everything that it says it's going to accomplish. So if the Lord says in the book of Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 7 down, if he says, Russia, Gog and Magog, is going to lead these nations to take down the beast, that is exactly what is going to happen. That's why we give honor and glory to our power, Yahweh. Bahashem Yahawashai. Family, let's, let's continue with the article. So that was the... Here. So he quoted Revelation chapter 9 verse 18. It says, Yet still, the narrow-minded politicians and their stupid think tanks thoughtfully twirling a glass of wine in their hands talk about how they can deal with us without entering into a direct war. Dull idiots with classical education. Medvedet wrote, they are not joking. They know the words. We are, they, are, they are done. But family, this is prophecy. This is the Lord. Yes, this is the Lord. The Lord's will will always be done. The Lord's counsel shall always stand. And that is our Father. This is how blessed we are. Hmm? This is how blessed we are. Family, let's get the next article. I have a few articles, family. I hope I can go through all of them. This is the second one. Here, we all know that Russia and China agree over new reality, Kremlin. Putin, President Putin and President Xi will be meeting this Thursday. Family, things are changing very fast. Mm -hmm. Alliances are being formed. Family, that unipolar world where America rule, those days are gone. Because the Lord is preparing to judge America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great. That's why the Lord calls America, virgin daughter of Babylon. That virgin has not been touched yet. 
They've gone around the world, destroyed every nation that they can get their hands on. But the Lord hasn't judged them yet. You have to ask yourself, how did they get this land? America came here when the northern tribe were here. Rape, murder, torture, thievery, they did it all. They haven't been judged yet. They went around the world. That's the power the Lord gave them. This is the Lord that put them there. Hmm? They benefited greatly from slaves. Yes, slave trade. Yes. America hasn't been judged yet. That's why I said, your virgin daughter of Babylon. Yes, family, that virgin hasn't been touched. Still a virgin. But the Lord is about to judge America. That's why you see in these nations forming alliances. That's right. China and Russia coming together. Two nuclear powerhouses. That's right. Two nuclear powerhouses. They will be meeting this coming Thursday. Things are moving fast. But fam, let's read it. It said the so-called golden billionaire. Billion, sorry. The so-called billion. This was published today. Narrative it says Russia and China agrees over a new reality. Kremlin. It said the so-called golden billion can't detect terms to other countries anymore. Dmitry Peskov says. It says here, he's the spokesman for the Kremlin. It says Russia and China share the understanding that a unipolar world has become impossible and that a new reality is coming. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov has said. It says, we believe in unison with our Chinese comrades that the existence of a unipolar world is impossible. Peskov told journalists on Tuesday. Moscow and Beijing agrees agree that is an impossible situation when the so-called golden billion is claiming the right to invent rules in economy in politics and the right to import its will on other countries he noted it says in the russia speaking world the term golden billion often refers to the wealthy populations of the u.s eu and other western nations farming these are fighting words the Third World War is inevitable. It is coming. This year, there's nothing you can do about it. Because in their mind, these two nations, Russia and China, and whoever is aligning with them, they honestly think that they are going to rule after America goes down. But no, family. The only one that is going to rule is Yahweh Shai's kingdom. Along with his elect, along with King David, yes. All our forefathers, yes. It's going to be our kingdom on this planet. The planet is going to be rejuvenated. Yes. The air is going to be fresh. The water is going to be clean. Our food is going to be clean. No more processed food. Eh? Animals are going to have peace. They're not going to be used as sporting you know, games. Eh? Nobody's just going to take a gun and just go say, I'm going hunting. Terrorizing the animals. No more family. The animals are going to have peace. Even the trees will also rejoice. Yes. And that's what we want. A righteous kingdom. Our children will be able to play on the street. Eh? Nobody is going to try to rape them. Hmm? Nobody is going to try to kidnap them. They're going to be free to play. That's the kingdom that we want. And the only one that's going to bring that peace on this planet is Yahweh Shai. And we cannot wait to see the king coming in his glory. It says Moscow and Beijing agree that it's an impossible situation when the so-called golden billion is claiming the right to invent rules in economy, in politics, and the right to impose its will on other countries, he noted. In the Russian-speaking world, the term golden billion often refers to the wealthy populations of the U.S., EU, and other Western nations. The foundation of the unipolar system has started to seriously creak and wobble. A new reality is emerging, the Kremlin spokesman pointed out. Family, America, NATO, EU is done because the Lord has said so. And here, let's, let's look at the war front again. Here, Israel. This was published yesterday from uh, antiwar.com. It says, Israel Mossad chief vows to continue covert attack inside Iran. It says, David Banya, the head of Israel Mossad spy agency, said Monday that Israel covert attacks inside Iran will continue regardless of whether or not the nuclear deal known as the JCPOA is restored. 
family, you have to ask yourself how to deal with the people of the book. Why have they been at war every, every t uh, since they moved into that land? Because family, they are not the people. They don't fit prophecy because the Lord says we, the king, Yahweh Shai, is the one that's going to take us into that land. That's right. And then he said when we live, when we enter that land, family, there will be peace. These people have not found peace since they went to that land. You see? And we know through the books, it says what? It says the land has to be trodden down by the Gentiles until the time is fulfilled. Just roughly paraphrasing. So yes, the Iran, Israel, back and forth family, it is all the Lord's doing. Preparing them for war. The war of Armageddon. The Lord is bringing all of them together to judge them. For the controversy of Zion. The apple of his eyes. So family, we are not worried. We are sitting back and waiting on our Lord to fight on our behalf. Now let's get into the financial news here. This is financial times. Family, Germany is on fire. The Europe is about to be destroyed. Because they are following the beast, America. The weaker Europe becomes, the stronger America becomes. Family, the cat is out of the bag. And the same nations, the same EU, are going to turn their missiles on America. Because they're going to be realized that when the people can heat their home, they can take warm shower. Yes. They're going to look at the, at, at, at the whore, which is America. Eh? The whore that's in bed with every nation. That's right. And they're going to turn their message. That's Revelation chapter 17, verse 17. Because it's the Lord's will. It says, from Europe powerhouse to its weak link, Germany's economy stutters. It's an economic model. This is from Financial Times. It says, the economic model that depends on export has been hit by a series of external shocks. Christian Lindra, Germany's finance minister, didn't pull his punches in describing the grim new reality facing Europe's largest economy. The country's prospect had become fragile. He said on Wednesday, growth forecasts were being downgraded. Life had become much more expensive for lots of people with rising prices for gas, energy and food. Germany is experiencing a squall of shocks that are darkening its economic outlook. Along with soaring inflation, persistent supply chain problems and weaker global demand are weighing heavily on the industry sector. What's most worrying is just how broad-based the weakness in the economy is, said Clemens Fuest, head of the uh, head of the IFO Institute, a think tank. In previous downturns, service suffered, but industry recovered, and vice versa. But now we are seeing weakness weakness across the board. Family, that's the Lord. That's the Lord. It's just men's heart failing them for what is coming. They can't do anything about it because this is the Lord's movie. This is how he wrote the script. Eventually, his will is going to be done. The Lord's will is going to be done. We have to have patience. Yes, the vision was for an appointed time, but at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it, it tarries, wait for it. It shall surely come. Family, the vision is speaking clearly. And then we give honor and glory to the king of Israel, Yahweh Shai. And his father, Yahweh, family, ah, we are blessed, man. Let's get the, let's go back. What can I, uh, is this, which one is this? Um, did I miss something? Yeah, family, so I don't want this thing to be long, but I think I've gone off for a bit. But uh, let's, uh. Let's uh, let's go back to Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. I love Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 41. That's where the Spirit is leading me. Isaiah 41, verse uh, 14. Um, no. 
no that's not it let's go to um let's finish off with Ezra's family is it Ezra's five this I think, I think uh, where is that um please bear with me I think it says rest five it says rest five or Ezra six let's go to Ezra six let's see if I can find it yes Let's finish with this family. The book of Ezra chapter 6 verse 27. It says, For evil shall be put out, hmm? and deceit shall be quenched. It says, As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome. And the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, family, the truth, the truth of who these people are the truth of who these nations are since these people came into power from the 1400 family they have turned this world upside down eh? they have changed the name of the nations and they've used their pseudoscience eh? create f all these false names eh? like the name black and white Eh? 1681 was created. The Lord didn't create colors from the crayon box. No, family. But the Lord says what? As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome. And the truth, the truth, family, the truth, which have been so long without fruit, shall be declared. The nations are going to know who the Israelites are. Mm -hmm. They're going to know who the Edomites are. They're going to know who Esau is. They're going to know who the, uh, the what's it called? The Moabites are. The Chinese, so the Chinese. They're going to know the Timonite. That's right. Which are the Indians. The Ammonite, the Japanese family. The Lord is bringing everything back. The truth, the truth, the truth. Let's read it, this entire thing again. Second Ezra chapter 6, family. Chapter, Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 27. It says, For evil shall, shall be put out. And deceit shall be quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome. And the truth, which have been so long without fruit, shall be declared. We are declaring the truth in the mighty and holy name of our Lord, our Redeemer. Yes. And his name is Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. So family, that has been news and prophecy. Yes, the war has to come. Oh yeah, they have to fight. The third war, the third war, three wars, family. The first war was 1914 to 1919. The second war was 1939 to 45. And the third war is coming quickly. Pursuant to Revelation chapter 11, verse 14. And our King Yahweh Shai is going to make an appearance. All praises, honor, and glory to our power, Yahweh. Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Rukakodash family. I hope you edify. I hope this word comforts you. Your Redeemer is coming. Yahushai is coming. We are living in the last days. This is it. This is it, family. This is it. We pray that we are the hopeful elect. Shalom.